Hi guys, welcome back to the third episode of our virtual lab series, Back to the Future. I'm Surat and I'm a science communicator at the Center for Predictive Human Model Systems or CPHMS as we all know it. In today's episode, we are going to explore how computational and mathematical models help predict disease biology and aid the process of drug discovery and development. Drug discovery is a process through which new drug candidates are identified and tested for treating diseases. But the entire drug discovery pipeline is a long and multi-stage process that takes up to a decade and millions of dollars. And unfortunately, the success rate for the cycle is also very low, where almost 90% of drugs that pass through the preclinical stages fail when it comes to the human clinical trials. In this episode, we are going to explore two such in silico methods, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, also known as PKPD modeling, and quantitative systems pharmacology or QSP models. These mathematical models can help represent the biological system and simulate complex biological processes which help guide drug development. These mathematical and computational tools not just allow us to predict how a drug behaves inside our body, but also our response to various drug candidate molecules. Today, we'll take you inside the offices of Vantage Research, a R&D company that creates these QSP and PKPD models. They use these models to reveal more information on existing drugs and also help select the most promising drug from a pool of candidates. So what do we do at Vantage? The core of our technology is mathematical modeling of biology. And when you say it like that, it seems like, okay, that's a very big challenge. How do you mathematically model human biology? But actually, when you break it down, you know, most industries, whether you think of uh, rocket launches, chip design, many of those industries, modeling and simulation is an integral part. So in biology and drug development also, it's starting to become an integral part. So let me give you a little bit of an example of, you know, to imagine what a mathematical model of biology would look like, right? So many people have diabetes today. So if you want to think of a mathematical model of diabetes, the simplest thing you ask is, when two people eat a piece of bread, what happens? It goes through your intestinal system, it gets ab absorbed in the blood, and a healthy person has a nice, uh, you know, controlled excursion of glucose in their blood, and everything goes away where it's supposed to. A diabetic, on the other hand, you know, the excursion may be much higher, and many of their other organs may be perturbed. So already you can start thinking of it as glucose moving from one compartment to the other, it is being regulated by some other hormones like insulin, and all of that lends itself very nicely to mathematical modeling. Now, some of the problems when you think of, okay, when you think of this mathematical modeling are, hey, do you have to worry about the genome? Do you have to worry about something much bigger? So, you know, one way to think about it is, you know, you can model how hard you have to press the brakes for a car to stop. When you're developing a physics equation like that, you don't necessarily think about what is happening in the quantum scale. You don't necessarily think about the effect of Jupiter on that car you pick a scale and you model it. So that's the way that we approach these complex problems. We focus on the scale of interest and we try to capture the phenomenology in that scale and then manipulate it, visualize what may happen when we put new drugs in that patient. So that's the core of what we do advantage. PKPD stands for pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. PK describes what the body does to a drug, like how fast it is absorbed into the blood or eliminated from the body. PD describes what the drug does to the body, like interacting with receptors and enzymes. PKPD is useful to understand, predict, and optimize drug-body interactions early in the drug development cycle. As a biologist, my job is to understand the dynamic relationship between the human body and drugs in different disease scenarios. So let me talk to you about an interesting case that we've worked on recently. In this case, we've tried to understand the relationship between Humira and rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease where the inflammation affects the bone joints in the body. Humira is a, a monoclonal antibody therapy that has been approved for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. In Humira, the monoclonal antibody, which is a man-made antibody, targets TNF-alpha, which is an important pro-inflammatory cytokine, and brings down its levels, 
thereby helping uh, the patients with the disease. In clinical trials, Humira is given to a group of individuals with the disease and uh, its PKPD relationships are followed up in these patients to help us understand how Humira will impact the disease. PKPD studies four processes in the body, adsorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. In clinical trials, drugs are administered via a particular route where they are absorbed into tissues over time. Blood helps to distribute Humira throughout the body so that it reaches its intended target location. As Humira spreads, the body simultaneously metabolizes and eliminates it. All these processes together reveal a concentration profile which is then captured by mathematical framework that accounts for each step. Using an application called SynBiology in MATLAB, we create small building blocks as a part of bigger models. Here, we will be capturing the pharmacokinetics and drug binding kinetics of adalimumab, which is an anti-TNF drug used for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. We begin by creating a new model and naming it ADA3. A box is created which represents the compartment. We will be creating a one compartment model and name this the central compartment. We add in values and units for these components based on data from reference literature. The first thing to do is create a species for the drug which in this case is a subcutaneous dose. The drug enters the central compartment via a first order reaction rate and is absorbed into the body. To represent this, we add a new species titled ADA and M to represent the unit which is nanomoles. Now, we want to represent a reaction where the subcutaneous dose is going from the dose compartment to the central compartment. For this, we add reaction icons, parameters to measure the reaction, and a rate constant. All the values added here are taken from literature. Next, we will carry out similar steps to add a component to measure the elimination of the drug from the central compartment. The next step is to verify for any errors and apply a dose to the subcutaneous species. We select the dose, name it as ADA, and select a target. In this case, our target is ADA SC, and according to literature, the value of the dose is 270.27 nanomoles. We add the remaining units, dosage time, and activate the dose. Now, we run our PK model. We upload our existing data, select the model, and generate a concentration versus time plot. This is how a typical PK concentration profile looks like. On x-axis we are tracking time and on y-axis we are tracking drug concentration in systemic circulation. After the first dose is given, there is a steady increase in the concentration over time uh, due to absorption of the drug into the circulation. And once it reaches a maximum, the drug clearance takes over and the drug is cleared from the body. Next, we will look at the binding kinetics of the drug. We define a new compartment and name it the gut compartment, where we will be capturing the transfer of the drug from the central compartment to the gut. We add reactions and define reaction rates such as forward, backward and degradation rates. We will verify the values and add a binding reaction of the drug with TNF-alpha, where the product is an adalimumab TNF-alpha complex. Now we will run a simulation, once without the drug dose and once with. We can now see two plots. Run number 1 shows a simulation without the effect of adalimumab and run number 3 shows a decrease in the value of TNF-alpha with the administration of the drug. Corresponding if you look at the PD profile, the target activity as the drug concentration increases, the target activity is reduced. And as the drug is removed from the body, the target activity goes back to its normal. And in clinic, to achieve efficacy, we will need more sustained reduction of target activity over time 
in which cases we will go for multiple dose scenarios so after the first dose is given before the concentration goes back to zero we give a second dose of the drug and repeat the dose so that the drug concentration is sustained over time and similarly the target activity will also be reduced in correspondence to the drug concentrations this is now a comprehensive pharmacokinetics or pk model which reduces the need for multiple clinical trials and can be used for many purposes like predicting new dosing regimens identifying concentrations of humira at different sites of the body and understanding the efficacy of modified drug molecules pharmacodynamics or pd can also be modeled by accounting for how the drug binds to the target we can evaluate further consequences of target inhibition and how inflammation responds to therapy by using more elaborate mechanistic models that account for the different players involved in the disease this is where quantitative systems pharmacology or qsp comes in building these models requires a detailed understanding of disease pathophysiology public literature is typically sourced for this knowledge we start by recognizing different cell types and cytokines that play an active role in disease physiology then we start collecting qualitative information on how these players interact with each other within the context of the disease using public literature sources a network of interaction between the key players involved in the pathophysiology of the disease can be described and quantified this network forms the structural basis of the qsp model of the disease disease models can be used for a variety of functions including representing the interplay of multiple cells drug targets and molecular pathways which drive the disease in this rheumatoid arthritis model we have included several important cellular and cytokine players let's focus on macrophages these immune cells play an important role in rheumatoid arthritis and go through cellular processes like proliferation cell influx apoptosis and cytokine secretion this leads to an increase in levels of tnf alpha and increases inflammation we are creating the life cycle of a macrophage cell in a rheumatoid arthritis disease model first we create a new model titled ra a box is generated which represents the compartment of our site of action here the site of action is the synovial tissue in a bone joint next we create a macrophage in this area of interest by adding an oval which represents a species each icon requires a numerical value which is taken from public literature sources now to capture the life cycle of this cell we must add three reactions proliferation migration and apoptosis the yellow circle icon represents a reaction three of these icons are dropped into the compartment and connected to the macrophage these reactions will be tracked using specific parameters next we add values for each parameter from our literature source this dashboard is an example of the sourced values which are added to the model The macrophage life cycle model is now ready. We want to add a regulation parameter on top of this for which we will introduce a new species TNF alpha. TNF alpha positively regulates the proliferation rate of macrophages. To track its activity, we include two reactions, a synthesis and a degradation rate. While several values are literature derived, Certain values like synthesis and proliferation will be estimated based on specific requirements. The TNF alpha is connected to the macrophage, a kinetic law is added, and the model is ready to be simulated and run.
Finally, we see this graph which represents the influence of TNF-alpha concentration in synovial tissue on macrophage numbers over a period of time. In the absence of a clear biomarker for a particular disease, the disease condition is measured by a clinical scope. Once we build a QSP model, the next step is to come up with a clinical score connecting the pieces we built in the model based on the available data. This is QSP SIN, a graphical user interface which allows us to carry out additional functionalities with the models we have created, like running simulations, optimization, and generating virtual patients and populations. Using the available clinical data, we will run a simulation for patients treated with Humira. Patients are categorized according to their clinical score, which defines the severity of the disease. Each patient responds differently to the drug and are divided into Humira responders and non-responders. These models can help understand the therapeutic response or a lack of it for different drugs. Typically, they can be calibrated to multiple therapies per disease to gain confidence in the predictions. These disease models can also help explain the differential response seen in the patients to a therapeutic drug. We do that by accounting for inter-individual variability of the pharmacokinetics and disease condition between the patients. These differences are translated to changes in model parameterizations. For example, a responder to Humira may have his inflammation driven by macrophages, whereas in a non-responder, it may be due to B cells or TH1 cells. We can further expand this effort to generate a single collection of these patient phenotypes and form a virtual population. These populations can be used to predict the outcome of a novel therapy or a combination of therapies. At Vantage, we have developed a virtual population calibrated to rheumatoid arthritis drugs including Humira. We use it to predict the efficacy of other potential drug candidates on Humira non-responders. So I think of Vantage as a current, uh, the current business, which is pharma R&D, modeling and simulation. That's what we do. But I also think of Vantage as what it can do, which is to bring together the world of biology with the world of mathematical modeling and, and see if that modeling can support uh, better health, uh, better health care, uh, disease prevention, etc. Today we learned how biological questions can be answered using mathematical equations. These computational models are a game changer in predicting human responses in the field of drug discovery and development. This brings us to the end of today's virtual lab. We hope your neurons are firing and look forward to all your interesting questions in the next B2F circle. Make sure to check out this episode's workbook and find your assignment questions. Tune in next time and come with us to a new lab where we learn about advanced imaging tools used to study human cognition. See you soon.